Hello everybody, welcome to today's reading through the Bible in 365. Today we are going to be focusing on Judges chapters 9 and 10 and Luke chapter 5 verses 17 to 39. We're getting started in Judges with chapter 9. One day Gideon's son Abimelech went to Shechem to visit his uncles, his mother's brothers. He said to them and to the rest of his mother's family, Ask the leading citizens of Shechem whether they want to be ruled by all seventy of Gideon's sons or by one man. And remember that I am your own flesh and blood. So Abimelech's uncles gave his message to all the citizens of Shechem on his behalf. And after listening to this proposal, the people of Shechem decided in favor of Abimelech because he was their relative. They gave him 70 silver coins from the temple of Baal Bareth, which he used to hire some reckless troublemakers who agreed to follow him. He went to his father's home at Oprah, Ophrah, and there on one stone they killed all 70 of his half-brothers, the sons of Gideon, but the youngest brother, Jotham, escaped and hid. Then all the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo called a meeting under the oak beside the pillar at Shechem and made Abimelech their king. When Jotham heard about this, he climbed to the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem. Listen to me if you want God to listen to you. Once upon a time, the trees decided to choose a king. First, they said to the olive tree, Be our king! But the olive tree refused saying, should I quit producing the olive oil that blesses both God and people, just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then they said to the fig tree, you be our king. But the fig tree also refused, saying, should I quit producing my sweet fruit, just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then they said to the grapevine, you be our king. But the grapevine also refused, saying, Should I quit producing the wine that cheers both God and people, just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then all the trees finally turned to the thorn bush and said, Come, you be our king. And the thorn bush replied to the trees, If you truly want to make me your king, come and take shelter in my shade. If not, let fire come out from me and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Jotham continued, Now make sure you have acted honorably and in good faith by making Abimelech your king, and that you have done right by Gideon and all of his descendants. Have you treated him with the honor he deserves for all he accomplished? For he fought for you and risked his life when he rescued you from the Midianites. But today, you have revolted against my father and his descendants, killing his seventy sons on one stone. And you have chosen his slave woman's son, Abimelech, to be your king just because he is your relative. If you have acted honorably and in good faith toward Gideon and his descendants today, then may you find joy in Abimelech, and may he find joy in you. But if you have not acted in good faith, then may fire come out from Abimelech and devour the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo. And may fire come out from the cities, not from the cities, and may fire come out from the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. Then Jotham escaped and lived in beer because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. After Abimelech had ruled over Israel for three years, God sent a spirit that stirred up trouble between Abimelech and the leading citizens of Shechem, and they revolted. God was punishing Abimelech for murdering Gideon's 70 sons, and the citizens of Shechem for supporting him in this treachery of murdering his brothers. The citizens of Shechem set an ambush for Abimelech on the hilltops and robbed everyone who passed that way. But someone warned Abimelech about their plot. One day, Gael, son of a Ebed, moved to Shechem with his brothers and gained the confidence of the leading citizens of Shechem. 
during the annual harvest festival at Shechem, held in the temple of the local god. The wine flowed freely and everyone began cursing Abimelech. Who is Abimelech? Gail shouted. He's not a true son of Shechem, so why should we be his servants? He's merely the son of Gideon, and this Zebul is merely his deputy. Serve the true sons of Hamor, the founder of Shechem. Why should we serve Abimelech? If I were in charge here, I would get rid of Abimelech. I would say to him, get some soldiers and come out and fight. But when Zebul, the leader of the city, heard what Gael was saying, he was furious. He sent messengers to Abimelech and Ar Arama, telling him, Gael, son of Ebed, and his brothers have come to live in Shechem, and now they are inciting the city to rebel against you. Come by night with an army and hide out in the fields. In the morning, as soon as it is daylight, attack the city. When Gale and those who are with him come out against you, you can do with them as you wish. So Abimelech and all his men went by night and split into four groups. Stationing themselves around Shechem, Gale was standing at the city gates when Abimelech and his army came out of hiding. When Gale saw them, he said to Zebul, Look, there are people coming down from the hilltops. Zebul replied, It's just the shadows on the hills that look like men. But again, Gale said, No, people are coming down from the hills, and another group is coming down the road past the diviner's oak. Then Zebul turned on him and asked, Now where is that big mouth of yours? Wasn't it you that said, Who is Abimelech and why should we be his servants? The men you mocked are right outside the city. Go out and fight them. So Gael led the leading citizens of Shechem into battle against Abimelech. But Abimelech chased him, and many of Shechem's men were wounded and fell along the road as they retreated to the city gate. Abimelech returned to Arama, and Zebul drove Gael and his brothers out of Shechem. The cat really wants my attention, guys. Come here. You can come here. <laughs> the next day, the people of Shechem went out into the fields to battle. When Abimelech heard about it, he divided his men into three groups and set an ambush in the fields. When Abimelech saw the people coming out of the city, he and his men jumped up from their hiding places and attacked them. Abimelech and his group stormed the city gate to keep the men of Shechem from getting back in, while Abimelech's other two groups cut them down in the fields. The battle went on all day before Abimelech finally captured the city. He killed the people, leveled the city, and scattered salt all over the ground. When the leading citizens who lived in the tower of Shechem heard what had happened, they ran and hid in the temple of Baal Bareth. Someone reported to Abimelech that the, that the citizens had gathered in the temple, so he led his forces to Mount Zalman. He took an axe and chopped some branches from a tree, then put them on his shoulder. Quick, do as I have done, he told his men. So each of them cut down some branches following Abimelech's example. They piled the branches against the walls of the temple and set them on fire. So all the people had lived in... So all the people who had lived in the tower of Shechem died, about 1,000 men and women. Then Abimelech attacked the town of Thebes and captured it. But there was a strong tower inside the town and all the men and women, the entire population, fled to it. They barricaded themselves in and climbed up to the roof of the tower. Abimelech followed them to attack the tower. But as he prepared to set fire to the entrance, a woman on the roof dropped a millstone that landed on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. He quickly said to his younger armor bearer, draw your sword and kill me. Don't let it be said that a woman killed Abimelech. So the young man ran him through with his sword and he died. When Abimelech's men saw that he was dead, they disbanded and returned to their homes. 
In this way, God punished Abimelech for the evil he had done against his father by murdering his 70 brothers. God also punished the men of Shechem for all their evil, so the curse of Jotham, son of Gideon, was fulfilled. Chapter 10 After Abimelech died, Tola, son of Pua, son of Dodo, was the, first, was the next person to rescue Israel. He was from the tribe of Issachar, but lived in the town of Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim. He judged Israel for 23 years. When he died, he was buried in Shamir. After Tola died, Jer from Gilead judged Israel for 22 years. His 30 sons rode around on 30 donkeys, and they owned 30 towns in the land of Gilead, which are still called the towns of Jer. When Jer died, he was buried in Cayman. Or come on, I don't know, came on? Again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They served the images of Baal and Ashtor Ashtoreth, and the gods of Aram, Sidon, Moab, Ammon, and Philistia. They abandoned the Lord and no longer served him at all. So the Lord burned with anger against Israel, and he turned them over to the Philistines and the Ammonites, who began to oppress them that year. For 18 years, they oppressed all the Israelites east of the Jordan River in the land of the Amorites, that is, in Gilead. The Ammonites also crossed to the west side of the Jordan and attacked Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim. The Israelites were in great distress. Finally, they cried out to the Lord for help, saying, we have sinned against you because we have abandoned you as our God and have served the images of Baal. The Lord replied, Did I not rescue you from the Egyptians, the Amorites, the Ammonites, the Philistines, the Sidonians, the Amalekites, and the Moanites? Maonites. When they oppressed you, you cried out to me for help and I rescued you. Yet you have abandoned me and served other gods. So I will not rescue you any more. Go and cry out to the other gods. No, go and cry out to the gods you have chosen. Let them rescue you in your hour of distress. But the Israelites pleaded with the Lord and said, We have sinned. Punish us as you see fit. Only rescue us today from our enemies. Then the Israelites put aside their foreign gods and served the Lord, and he was grieved by their misery. At that time, the armies of Ammon had gathered for war and were camped in Gilead, and the people of Israel assembled and camped at Mizpah. The leaders of Gilead said to each other, Whoever attacks the Ammonites first will become ruler over all the people of Gilead. Moving on to Luke chapter 5, verses 17 to 39. One day, while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. And the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. They tried to take him inside to Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. Then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, Young man, your sins are forgiven. But the Pharisees and teachers of religious law said to themselves, Who does he think he is? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And immediately, as everyone watched, the man jumped up, picked up his mat, and went home praising God. 
Everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe, and they praised God, exclaiming, We have seen amazing things today. Later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and left everything and followed him. Later, Levi held a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. Many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them. But the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples, Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Jesus answered them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. One day, some people said to Jesus, John the Baptist's disciples fast and pray regularly, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. Why are your disciples always eating and drinking? Jesus responded, Do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Then Jesus gave them this illustration. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and uses it to patch an old garment. For then the new garment would be ruined, and the new patch wouldn't even match the old garment. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine would burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine must be stored in new wineskins, but no one drinks the old wine but no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine. The old is just fine, they say. Thank you for joining me for today's Reading Through the Bible in 365. I hope you all have a wonderful Wednesday, and I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye!